Millionaires and billionaires don't delegate. Well, they don't delegate tasks, that is. Instead, they actually create roles for people. A delegated task is a lot like a boomerang. It keeps coming back every time you throw it. That puts pressure on you. Instead, millionaires create roles that people own so they don't have to micromanage it. Roles are about productivity. It's not about making people do it just like you. Empower people to run their role as if it was their own business. So why create roles over just delegate tasks? Well, delegating tasks can become micromanagement. Me, I personally suck at micromanagement. It's exhausting, it takes a lot of time, and I haven't met the people like, please micromanage me, that feels amazing, right? That's not what people want. You just have to be able to trust in people, and there's some myths out there, like if you want something done right, you've gotta do it yourself. Well, that's only true if you don't have the right people on your team, or they don't have clarity around what their role is and what the desired outcome might be. See, it's so exhausting to micromanage and to be micromanaged. And creating roles really looks at this bigger picture. So an example of a role could be my chief of staff, where I say, hey, you're gonna take on this project for the office renovation. That's her role. She actually comes up with the ideas of the operations to handle that role, not me. Now, I can brainstorm with her in a meeting, but it's really her main responsibility, and then she's accountable to me, and then I kind of help support that when she asks for it. So you can create a role versus delegating a task. When I had my very first assistant, I used to just delegate tasks, and I would give her a task, and she'd finish it, and she was great at that. And it was great while we were a boutique. But as we start to have a bigger vision and say, how are you gonna get a million people economically independent? Delegating tasks took up a lot of my time. And if I was gonna travel or go to a mastermind or be away, well then, she was either waiting for me or didn't have the, the full degree of productivity. Not everyone's built to take on roles because she was a phenomenal assistant. We had a great relationship, but once she took on a role, she missed that kind of boutique feel. And I kind of look at that like in business. You might start out as like a sailboat, right? And there's a lot that you're doing and you hire someone to assist you, but if the winds aren't right, you're not moving forward. If the waves are, it's pretty rough. So you might see someone that has a motor and you're like, oh, look at that boat speeding by. And as you jump ship, some people are most sailboat people that support you than they are kind of a speedboat. So they might not want to come with you and that's the hard thing about business. And then from there, you might move from that and see, oh, look at that yacht over there, how luxurious, and people know exactly what they're doing. People have their specific roles on a yacht, and people that like speedboats might not love yachts. So maybe as you grow and mature as a business owner, people don't jump ship. And then finally, the battleship, that's the ultimate one, right? You could leave that thing, and there's a GPS, and everybody knows exactly what they're doing, and you're not having to micromanage. Like That's why you can, once again, leave it, and it can handle about anything. It can handle waves, it can handle different you know, people coming to attack it. And so what we're looking at is different people operate differently. So you might have the right people on the right type of boat right now, or you might be progressing and growing and eventually jump ship. Uh, that's so cheesy, I just said that, kind of that pun. But you jump ship to something else, and some may want to come with you, others may not. But you have to really assess and say, are these people supporting me where I want to go, or are they not the right person? So I love when I create a role for someone and they generate a lot of the operations and how they want to go about getting those things done, not how I want to go about getting them done, but as long as we achieve the right end result. So here's another example. I'm writing a book and I hired someone to run that project. So they're talking about where the marketing is, is going, who the editors are, um, what the deadlines are, you know, what we're doing from an ebook standpoint, what people, what, you know, where we're getting in airports. And so they're owning that role. And then I have a call with them today and they kind of ask for support or clarity and then they keep running with that project versus me being the one doing it and saying, okay, I need you to go to this and this and this and then every step along the way, I'm spending the majority of my time instead of writing and creating in managing and being involved in projects. And some people love that. I like to come up with ideas, other people like to implement those ideas, so you have to know, are you an idea starter or an idea finisher? And if you're in the right role, it'll be really productive. If you're not, it can be really destructive. So how can you make the objective even more clear? Well, when first starting out, it can be hard to really understand the core difference between delegating a task and creating a role. So I'm gonna dive in deeper and give you three ways you can identify a way to create a role over just delegating a task. So the first one is a task is a one-time action. Do this, it's done, what's next? Second, a role is more process and project oriented, something that may reoccur, 
something that might have different components that come in to happen to make it the final product, like a book. You've got design, you've got writing, you've got editing, you've got distribution, you've got so many different pieces. And three, roles generate the tasks. Roles are in charge and they generate the tasks. And then delegation is where you might assign those tasks, but that person running the role is the one that would do the delegating, not you. If it ends up back on your plate, that's not as good. So one of my early mentors named Rick, he was actually having lunch with a billionaire. And that billionaire was saying, hey, I've got this idea. And Rick said, that's a phenomenal idea. And the billionaire said, who do you know who could run it? Who do you know that could do that? Do you know a CEO? He says, I don't. And when they met a month later, he goes, hey, how's that idea going? He goes, I'm still waiting for the right person to run it. Not waiting, but searching for it. Because he knew if we had the right person, it wouldn't all end up on his plate, scramble on like crazy, taking on massive risks, not having all the capabilities, and then having no time for family or self. Like This is a completely different mindset with the millionaire than even a billionaire. They're not delegating tasks. They're hiring people, they're creating roles. And knowing the difference between creating roles and delegating tasks can give you more enjoyable life along the way, a better business that you can truly scale. This will give you even more freedom and empower your team. All right, well, like empowering the team, that's critical because when I was always around, I was the bottleneck. I went to this event once and I told my assistant, hey, I'm not supposed to be in touch with anyone until I get back because I'm supposed to be totally focused on this event. And I had seven voicemails from her. Now, that's because she was so used to relying on me for everything that when I landed, I hurried and called her and I had found out she had done all seven things without my input and she had done them well. Sometimes we're the biggest bottleneck, we're having everyone rely just upon us, we become so-called control freaks, but be a control freak about who you hire, not about doing everything and having everything go through you. So now you have the knowledge to transform your thoughts into profits and build the life you love. Want to learn more about this topic? Check out my video on how so many people are doing the wrong hard work. So how can you do hard work the right way?